Well, I just love tonight. You can physically feel God's presence, and that is just awesome. So I've been praying about this for a while and just asking God, you know, God, what do I need to say? What do these people need to hear? And one day, a few weeks ago, I was sitting in church, and the gospel was from Matthew, and it was the story of Jesus walking on water. Now, prior to this, I had known that Jesus walked on water, and it was awesome and whatnot, but I didn't really know some of the details. So in case you don't either, here's kind of how it went. So Jesus and his disciples, they get on this boat, and they cross the lake. And on the other side of the lake, Jesus gets off the boat and goes up to a hill to pray. Well, while Jesus is up on the hill, the boat with the disciples in it is pushed to the middle of the lake. And so a while later, Jesus comes down off of his hill, and he sees that the disciples are in the middle of the lake. So what does he do? Jesus starts walking on water. But now seeing this, the disciples grew fearful, just questioning, who is this? What's going on? How is this person doing this? And finally, Peter stepped up and said, Lord, if that is truly you, command me to walk on water next to you. So Jesus said, all right, Peter, come. So Peter gets out of the boat and he starts walking on water towards Jesus. However, in Matthew chapter 14, verse 30, it says, but when he, when Peter noticed the strong wind, he was afraid and started to sink down into the water. Save me, Lord, he cried. And as soon as he said that, Jesus reached his hand down, pulled Peter out of the water, and said, Peter, why do you not have faith? Now, after reading this, I just kind of thought, yeah, that's an awesome story. But God, what does it mean? There's got to be so much more meaning to this story. What is the meaning behind it? And that day, God spoke to me. God spoke to me, and he said, Allie, those stress and those, those wind and waves are your stress and your anxieties. Wait, what? What do you mean, God? But after reading it over again, it makes perfect sense. Peter got off the boat and started walking towards Jesus on the water. But as soon as he noticed the wind and the waves, he grew fearful and he started sinking further and further away from Jesus. Much like our stress and our anxiety and our fear in life causes our relationship to go further and further away from Jesus. And we sink down and down further away from Jesus. Wow, isn't that so powerful? Just this one story, this little story from the Bible has so much meaning behind it. Now, getting away from that a little bit and a little bit about me, I am a complete perfectionist. It is part of my personality, and my perfectionism causes lots and lots of stress. And sophomore year was a rough year for me because my stress just kind of reached a peak. I remember studying one Saturday. I had been studying for hours, and I just couldn't take it anymore. I threw my book down, and I just started crying. I started crying because I could not take the stress anymore that I continued to put on myself. And in that moment, I realized that I could not get th through this alone anymore. Up until that point, I had been trying to deal with the stress, the stress of school, all the stress that I put on myself for trying to be the best at everything. I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't do it alone anymore. And in that moment, I realized that I needed help and that it is okay to need help. So many times we are afraid to seek help because we think that is a weakness. For me, I thought needing someone else to help me, to help me learn how to deal with my stress and to help show me what happiness, how, how to be happy again, I thought that that made me weak. But in that moment that I was completely stressed, I realized that it is okay to need help. That God put 7.5 billion people on this earth. That means there are over 7 billion people put on this earth to help you. At some point, everyone needs help. So guys, if you are going through something and you've been trying to do it alone, I just want to be here tonight to tell you it is okay to seek help. We were put on this earth to help each other because in that moment that I couldn't take the stress anymore, I was Peter sinking. Now, on to junior year, that started off, well, it was actually a lot better than sophomore year. It started off great. My classes were a lot easier, less homework, less studying. Soccer was going great. We were supposed to be the team to beat in the WBL. Everything was going great. And finally, 
a little, how about halfway through the soccer season, my coach walks up to me and he hands me the captain's badge. I was so excited. I haven't felt this great in what seemed like years. I just, I couldn't believe it. However, two hours later, I was running after a ball and I felt a huge pop in my knee and tore my ACL. I was out for the rest of the season and up until this season that I'm in right now. Isn't it crazy how God can just take us from our highest of highs, and we are on top of the world, and just put us right back into one of the deepest valleys we've ever been in. Isn't it crazy how much power God has? But guys, I wouldn't change that experience. I wouldn't change the pain, the surgery, all the physical therapy. I wouldn't change any of it, because I learned so much. I learned you must always be humble. When you are on top of life, when you are on top of that mountain, when you are handed the captain's badge in life, you must remember to humble yourself enough to realize that people are not up there with you. They are still climbing their mountain and they need help. We were not put on this earth to bask in the glory of being on top of everything, on top of the world. We were put to help those people up their mountain too. Because just like that, with just a pop of the knee, we could be put back into one of the deepest valleys we've ever been in and once again be Peter sinking. Now, as I look, as I walk through the grocery store, or even just sit on my own couch and I watch commercials, I see these imagey, images of a beautiful woman, or the ideal man or woman, and these images, they just scream at me. They scream at me without saying anything at all. They scream louder than anyone could ever scream at me. But they are just putting these yelling thoughts in my mind of, Allie, you are not good enough. Ali, you need to be more like this image to be good enough. Ali, you are not pretty enough. You are not strong enough. Ali, you are not good enough. And those thoughts, they just pound in my head and they are so easy to fall for because they're everywhere. Everywhere you look is an image of the ideal person telling you that you are not good enough. And so many companies trying to sell their product by convincing you that you are not good enough. Therefore, you need to buy their product so then you can feel good enough. But guys, I am here to tell you tonight that you are enough, that God created you to be enough, that God would have created you differently if he thought you weren't enough. The same God that created the sun and the moon and the whole world and our entire universe created you too, and he created you to be enough. One of my favorite Bible verses is 2 Peter um, chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. You should not use outward aids to make yourselves beautiful, such as the way you fix your hair, the jewelry you put on, or the dresses you wear. Instead, your beauty should consist of your true inner self, the ageless beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of greatest value in God's sight. Which is of greatest value in God's sight. God tells us right there that he doesn't care at all what we look on the outside, that he created us to be beautiful on the inside, and inside he created us to be enough. And so many times in our world, society is so quick to call our outside appearance ugly. But really, in turn, it is society being the ugly one. Because in those moments that we feel like we are not enough, and in that moment that I see that image of a beautiful lady, and I let it convince me that I am not enough, I am Peter sinking. Guys, we are all sinking. Whether it's from stress of family, of relationships, from work, from school, from sports, we are all sinking. But the good news is, God is right there to help you. The same way he was right there to pull Peter out of the water as he started sinking. But now the thing is, Peter can't just command the wind and waves that he was afraid of. He can't just command them to stop. That's impossible, we can't control mother nature. Much like in our life, problems are always gonna be happening. There's always gonna be something wrong going on. There's always gonna be that stress. We just can't command it to stop. That's absolutely impossible. But what we can do is learn to take that stress and to give it to God. To have enough trust and enough faith to reach our hand out the way Peter did and say, Lord, I can't do this without you. Lord, I give my stress, and I give my fear, and I give my anxiety. I give it all to you. Lord, help me. And only then will we be able to walk on water next to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, and God bless.